I was um, talking uh, to a friend last night about cartoons that we used to watch when we were kids, and I noticed a trend that most of them involve superheroes. Like, I, at least the ones that I brought up. Um, which, you know, shocker. <laughs> um, you know, Justice League, Batman Beyond, Static Shock... Um, Teen Titans, lots of DC shows back in the early 2000s. Um, Code Lyoko was kind of like that, too. Um, I mean, Jimmy Neutron fought supervillains. Um, what else was there? Uh, there's, there were so many superhero shows back in the early 2000s. Oh, there was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. Um, there were a few Marvel ones, I feel like. Uh, there was Wolverine and the X-Men, I know. Um, I think there was a Spider-Man show. I vaguely remember watching some sort of Spider-Man show. It may have just been reruns of the Spider-Man show from the 90s, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I noticed this trend was like every single show I brought up. It was like superheroes, 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 superheroes. And I thought of cartoons that are airing now, primarily on Cartoon Network. And I can't think of any, like, that are superhero related. Um... Like, you had that Green Lantern animated series for a while, but that got cancelled. Same with Beware the Batman, I think. I think Beware the Batman got cancelled. Pretty sure it did. I'm not exactly sure, though. Um, and you have Teen Titans Go, which is just dumbed down Teen Titans. Um, same with, like, Spider-Man uh, Unlimited. No, wait, it's not. It's Ultimate Spider-Man. Same with Ultimate Spider-Man. It's just dumbed down Spider-Man. Um... And there's not really a lot of like newer superhero cartoons. I can't I can't even name five off the top of my head. Um, the closest I can come to is Steven Universe, but even then, like uh, I've been watching Manos's uh, reviews of Steven Universe, and you know he always refers to the gems as superheroes, but you know that's debatable. My personally, I could consider them superheroes because you know they wear colorful costumes, at least. Kind of. Like, they're, they're, whatever, I'm not gonna get into Steven Universe mythology. Their costumes are kind of their skin, but whatever. Um, <laughs> they're not really wearing clothes, it's just like an abstract, uh, they're not even really, like, physical beings, but whatever, I'm not gonna get into Steven Universe mythology. But, um, like, my definition of a superhero is wears a costume and fights, you know, larger than life threats. Um,. Or crime. Crimes are, crime are larger than life threats. The two are interchangeable, depending on the situation. Like, because, you know, Batman does both. Uh, you know, he fights drug dealers, and, you know, he's gone up against Darkseid. And you have a lot of characters like that. Daredevil has done that. Um, Spider-Man's done that. You know, Spider-Man fights, you know, the, he can fight the Kingpin in one issue, and then in the next issue he's fighting, you know, some big supervillain. Um... Which is just part of the diversity of superheroes. And I, I just find it really strange that superheroes are were really popular for children's entertainment in, like, the early 2000s, but they weren't as popular in adult entertainment. Like, it was sort of breaking ground. Like, you had the Spider-Man movie, the, the Sam Raimi one, and you had Fantastic Four, and you had Batman Begins. But they were still kind of niche movies. They didn't do huge guns until, I think, Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 was, like, the first really big blockbuster one. I think Spider-Man was a sleeper hit, even back in the day. Um, I know Batman Begins was a sleeper hit. Like, barely anyone talked about it. I, I had one toy, and I didn't even see the movie until later in my life, when The Dark Knight came out, and I was more mature and <laughs> could understand it, because, like, when Batman Begins came out, I was, like, what, seven? Yeah. Um, and now we kind of have the reverse of that. We have a lot of adult entertainment that's centered around superheroes. We have the Avengers. We A lot of live action stuff, you know, that's more geared towards, towards an adult audience. We have the Avengers. We have Arrow and the Flash on TV. We have the Daredevil Netflix show. Um, we don't really have much from, like, non-Marvel and DC things, but that's neither here nor there. And then in the cartoon realm... In, in, like, kids' entertainment, there's, like, not that much. Well, I, I, if anything, there's just not a lot. 
And, I, and I'm just wondering why. Like, because the, that's the beauty of superheroes, is that they're such a diverse character umbrella, is that you can do gritty crime-centric uh, stuff, which I think was the mistook step with Arrow. As much as Arrow is awesome, I think it's weird that he has to fight a supervillain every episode. Because Green Arrow doesn't really need supervillains. In the comics, he just fights politicians and drug dealers. <laughs> like, that's that's Green Arrow. Um, and, he, like, like, just take a look at the TV that we have going on now that's superhero-centric. You have Arrow, which, while, while it has supervillains, it's more, it's more not, like, realistic supervillains, but they're grounded. In, in the sense that, you know, um... Clock King is more grounded than Gorilla Grodd is grounded. And, you know, on the opposite spectrum, you have The Flash as, you know, a beautiful segue of conversation as I've made that. On the opposite spectrum, you have The Flash where he's fighting, you know, super villain supervillains, like larger than life supervillain characters. Like, you know, all, all the metahumans that he has. Um, and you have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And, and Agent Carter, which are spy shows. And you have Daredevil, which is also, uh, kind of the go-to thing is gritty street-level stuff, but you can do so much, and, you know, I, I've always thought that, you know, if you had a sci-fi show that was Green Lantern, like, on the sci-fi network, or, or, you know, a network like that, you know, because, you know, sci-fi has this kind of stigma of, you know, oh, they're the Sharknado people. Like, it's just Asylum movies. But it's not like that. Like, they had Battlestar Galactica for a while. I'm pretty sure that was a sci-fi original series. But if you had a Green Lantern show that was on sci-fi, you could do that and have a space odyssey, and it's still a superhero show. And, you know, you could... Um, who else? You could have Aquaman or Thor or Wonder Woman, and you could have these epic broad spanning fantasy stories and they all fit into different kinds of genres you can do high concept science fiction crime fiction um fantasy um you you can do uh, you, all sorts of different stories uh, my mind is blanking on different types but you, you you get the point and you know like, we're broadening the horizons by adding superheroes into these stories that we've already been telling with adults uh, in, in mediums other than comics. But we haven't been doing that for kids' entertainment. I think it's really dangerous for the future of the superhero character. Because if you're just making stuff for adults... I, I mean, yes, those kids will grow up and, um, and enjoy that possibly later... But if they don't have something to latch onto, like, as they're growing up, which is why I think it's important to have stuff for kids, but not everything has to be for kids. Why can't we have both? That's the thing, is that it seems to be either one or the other with this sort of stuff. I don't really understand why. Um, you know, I, I, I would love to have a world where I can turn on one show and, you know, it's... Say HBO makes a question TV show. I know it will never happen. This is, wow, this is the second video in a row. I've brought up the question. <laughs> but say HBO or AMC makes a question TV show. I could, I could watch that, and that's a superhero show. Or I could watch, like, a new Defenders cartoon. Or a Fantastic Four cartoon. Because I think Fantastic Four is much more suitable for cartoons than it is for live-action films. But whatever. Um... And it could be on the same, you know, I, I could just flip a few channels and it would be on the same airing slot. And I, I really like that idea, but we've never really had something like that. At, at least something really broad. Like, it seems to be either a lot of... Uh, it, it seems to be, like, you know, a, a, a tipping balance where less of one equals more of the other. And I'm just like, why... Or... or or the other way around. More of one equals less of the other. And I just, like, I want more of both, you know? I want more live-action serious portrayals of superheroes, but I also want more, you know, light-hearted, but still, like, family-centric. That, that's the thing, is that when you add the... When you add the kid, uh... thing to it, it automatically adds this connotation to what you're making, where it's like, oh, it's just for kids. I don't feel like watching that. It's for kids. But when you have a f 
like a more family oriented like Fantastic Four cartoon where it's like it, it's like the Bruce Tim DC animated universe where you can deal with more darker themes. I, I, that can work. It I, it's just seems like a no brainer to me, but studios don't really want to do that. I, I I I don't know. Just like why why aren't there more superhero cartoons? I I just want more. <laughs> I, I mean, we have the live-action shows, but I, I want more cartoons. I, I like my cartoons. 